you. You stick your finger out, I'll wrench your finger. You stick your hand out, I'll wrench your hand. You stick your whole body out, my children, I will wrench all of you. Thank you, Lord. Okay, now I'm safe. <laughs> I delivered the message. Just as I was coming out, I was given this Missions Fund Raising Brunch, Saturday, 12 September, 9 a.m. to 11, adult 35, child 2250. Uh, there's a table at the back there. Feel always free to support them because souls is the heartbeat of God. He came for you, he came for me. He came for you, he came for me. You know what's the other good news? He's constantly pursuing after us. He never stops. He's the crazy lover. So there's many more out there needs to see the glory of God. And it will come upon them. There's a tradition in this church that when they start, they start with the declaration. And if I could invite each and every one of us to stand up to your feet, grab hold of your word of the Lord, and remember it's a declaration, so you don't read it, we don't read it, we don't say it, we declare it. And it's whose job to fulfill it? His. I always tell him, it's your problem. I've done my part. I've thrown the ball to you. God, take over. So let's go. I decree there is an anointing on my life. God's incredible blessings rain down and there is an explosion of His widespread increase and overflow on me. I declare God's supernatural favor over my situation according to Ephesians 3.20. God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask or think. Because I honor Him, His blessings will chase me down and will overtake me. No weapon formed against me will prosper, and no enemy scheme against me will succeed. I live, breathe, and serve powerfully under the shelter of the Most High God. Hoo-ha! Amen. God bless you. The kingdom of darkness have heard it. <laughs> The kingdom of heaven has heard it as well. It's the authority that he has given us. The moment you and I realize that, Satan is in trouble. He is in trouble. Uh, the last time I was here on a Saturday, there was an utterance made that welcome to the 5 p.m. to the 11 p.m. service. And some of you all knew we left at 10.30 p.m. <laughs> the last person got prayer. Uh, however, because of Concerns by our neighbors, uh, we like to try and complete on time. So I'm praying, God, don't hijack me. <laughs> so let's go. So the topic they were supposed to cover or was given to cover uh, is on repentance. And as usual, waiting on the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you want me to, to talk about the scripture that was given to me to share, Acts 2.38? The Lord says, son... The title is going to be The Power of Repentance. Because God is in the business of power. Amen to that? Yeah, you and I are already on the winning side. We have already won the victory and we are still on the winning side. So I, this is just a download that just came. He said winning side. And he says, I've already won the victory. So I'm asking the Lord, why are you using these words? He says, because there are many more grounds that we're going to establish together with my people. Acts 2.38 says, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent. In 2 Peter 3.9, we say, the Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, towards me, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. I emphasize on the word, all should reach repentance. Luke 15, 7, Just so I tell you, 
there will be more joy in heaven over one. One sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And as these words the Lord brought to me, and he asked me, son, what do you see a common ground across all of this? You see the underlines, everyone. God goes after every individual. The last, in Luke 15, 7, it talks about one sinner who repents. I am thankful that I have a God that's crazy for me. Aren't you? Whatever we do, whatever we do, with all reverence, I say this, like a pet dog. He's always behind. <laughs> whatever you do, he's running around you. <laughs> you come back from home, you drive in to your driveway, already at the door. God is there. Even if we shoo Him, He doesn't shoo us. You know, when I go through that verse, it reminds me, some of you may have shared, I'm just waiting on the Lord, should I share or not? But the Lord says, didn't I say, even if one sinner who repents, heaven rejoices. So some of you may have heard it before, some may not have, some over the video may be hearing it for the first time. But the Lord is asking me to share about this and I'll share with you in obedience to the Lord. A couple of years ago, in my quiet time, I was praying. And while praying, the Lord shows me a vision of someone standing on top of a tall building. And in the vision, the Lord, I didn't count the, the floors, the Lord showed me 20 stories. Didn't strike me at all. And I said, Lord, what's this guy going to do? What's he doing up on top of the building? The Lord says, son, he's going to take his own life. I said, Lord, he's committing a sin and he's going to go to hell. And the Lord tells me, son, in such a lovely, beautiful voice, he tells me, son, be patient. Do not judge. Next vision, this man leaps off that 20-story building. And I say, Lord, he's going to hell. He has committed a sin. And the Lord tells me the same thing again. Son, be patient, do not judge. Next vision. To his left, as he stumbles into the floor, appears Satan himself. And I say, Lord, Satan has appeared for his soul. He is going to hell with Satan. And the Lord said to me again, Son, be patient, do not judge. Next vision. As the two of them are tumulting to the ground, God appears on the right. I said, Lord, what's happening here? The Lord says, Son, you have judged him to hell. I am still pursuing after his soul. That's the Lord you and I serve. I said, Lord, forgive me. Just as, the, as he was about to hit the ground, he cried out, God, have mercy on me. And the right hand of God, you and I know the significance of the right hand of God. The right hand of God comes out and vroom, takes him. And only Satan is left hovering over the ground. I say, Lord, thank you for showing me. It is not what I interpret of who goes to heaven or hell. You go after everyone. Even the dying moment. You know, the Lord told me that the other day, I was praying for someone. He said, son, if a parent or someone prays for someone's soul, I will turn up and shove my face in their face at the moment of death. I said, well done, God. Yeah. Keep on shoving your face. <laughs> Go and Google about Ian McCormick. He's a new, we don't have time to cover it. Google Ian McCormick, a New Zealander, a banker who got stung by a couple of, 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 of box jellyfish. Dying moment. In the ambulance, certified dead, God appears. He's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. God appears, shoves his face in his face. Why? Because his mom has been praying for him all the while. God honors prayers. He goes after the soul. So my friends, you and I have the easy job. Pray for people. Go after their soul. He will go after them. Then what happens? I just shared with you this vision. 
Then the Lord tells me, son, do not share this vision of this guy jumping off the building with anyone. I say, why, Lord? He says, because I don't condone the act of suicide. It is a sin. I am just telling you that all sins are forgivable. I go after souls. So I said, okay, Lord. Six months later, he brings me to a country. And while someone came for prayer, while praying with this couple, a husband and wife, the Lord tells me, share this vision to them. I said, Lord, you told me not to share this with anyone. For six months, I've been quiet. Even though there have been people which, who had gone through suicide who have come to me, I wanted to share. And, I, and the Lord says, no. I said, you told me to be quiet. Now you are telling me to share in a foreign country with this couple? The Lord says, yes. As I shared, both of them started to cry. And the wife looks at me and says, my dear brother PJ, can my husband tell you something? I said, sure. He was an, he was, he's an elder in a church. I thought he's going to biblically correct me. He, you know, <laughs> ah, the guy has left. He's going to hell. Why do you say he's safe? But this is what the guy told me. My dear brother, six months ago, the Lord showed me the vision six months ago. And this is what he's telling me. Brother PJ, six months ago, I was playing golf. And I had a couple of missed calls. And as you know, golf, you can't answer phone calls. So after the game, I went to the clubhouse, took my phone. And there was two missed calls from my eldest brother. And an SMS from him. And the SMS went like this. My dear brother, I am jumping off a 20-story building. I tried calling you, but you did not reply. Please watch over my wife and my children. I pray that God will forgive me. He says, my brother is a Christian just like me. He did a foolish act, but I'm sure he would have called upon the Lord. For the last six months, I've been asking everyone, including pastors, where is my brother's soul? And God shows you a vision of someone jumping off a building exactly six months ago, and you tell me 20 story, and he jumped off a 20 story building. The man starts to cry, I start to cry again. I say, God, who am I? Who am I? You showed me your love and how far you go to save a soul. Now you bring me to another country to heal a broken heart and to tell him, it is well with my soul. That's the Lord, you and I serve. Friends, never underestimate our God. Don't let the liar say anything less of our God. You know what's the most beautiful thing? That's a couple of years ago. Two weeks ago in that same church, a family that grew up in that church, their son who is a banker, jumped off another tall building in the period of COVID when there was lockdown. And this guy, who God touched his soul and restored his soul about his brother's act, went to the funeral, sat down with him, and told him this. I want to tell you something that Brother PJ shared with me a couple of years ago. You know what the guy told him? A couple of years ago, I was eating at a, a restaurant when Brother PJ and his wife was walking across the street. And I called them, come over, and they crossed the street and sat down at the table with me, and they shared the same vision. I am a hurting father because my son has taken his life. But I remember, I remember him sharing about how God saved a soul. See, God is not a dead God. God's act of reaching out keeps... See, when he called, he told me that. I said, oh my God, Father, you are still going after souls. You are still comforting parents. You are still comforting broken hearts. Friends, we, you and I can say it is well with our soul. You and I say, can say that he will go after every sinner. See, if I want something from you, what should I do? Ask, right? Then I will receive. If we want forgiveness, what do we need to do? Repent. Once we repent, we get forgiveness. See, what is repentance? 
See, as I was preparing, I said, Lord, what's repentance? The Lord says, you just, you just sit down and listen to me. I'll tell you what's repentance. And this is what I get. Turning from one's present state, condition, situation to a better, correct, positive, new state, condition, or situation. In order to repent, one needs to be aware of one's current situation and have the desire or conviction to make the amendment. So I put it here in bracket, PJ's view. <laughs> then I went to do my research. What does, in the New Testament, we'll see in the next slide, the Greek word used very often in the New Testament for repentance is metanoia. It has two words in there, meta and noia. Meta talks about change. Noia talks about the mind. So we have metamorphosis, noia, paranoia. And in Hebrew, we have teshua, translated as returning. It's beautiful. So repentance talks about a change, a good change. And also at the same time, it talks about returning. One is going forward. The other one is talking about returning. How can you go forward and return? Yes, you can, if you're going in the right direction, Right? Praise the Lord. Another download just hit, right? Keeps coming. As long as we open, he keeps talking. See, the prodigal son, he was going in the wrong direction, right? Okay, this is not part of the message, but he's saying, going this direction, I'm going. First, he left his father's house. He went into the town. From the town, he moved to the city. From the city, in the end, we see he was in a distant land. Satan takes us one step away at a time. If someone has to come up to you, hey, follow me, I'm going to kill you, would you follow him? No. Unwise, right? I say, sir, be my friend. Slowly. But if the direction is wrong, it leads us to death. But the moment he realized, the prodigal son realized that he has lost everything, he was thinking, can I go back? He made the choice to turn around. I tell you, the moment you make the choice to turn around, Heaven rejoices. God rejoices. My child is turning. My child has stopped. My child has stopped. He's turning. He's turning. He's turning. She's turning. And the scripture says, from a distance, the father, from a distance, the father saw the son. In order for the father to see from a distance, he is watching every day for the return of the son. And the scripture says, the son was dragging his feet. Will my father accept me back? But what does the scripture say? What did the father do? He ran. While the son was hesitating and walking back slowly, the father ran from the house. And when you study culture, those days, those of high status, like the father, would have his robe on. And for them to expose your leg is shameful. Touching a leg is shameful. So that's where you see Jesus washing the legs, right? God Almighty, Son of a God, our Savior, touched the feet and washed the feet. It is not acceptable in this culture. It's only meant for certain people. You don't even show your leg. Just imagine, just visualize this. A father with his robe. How is he going to dash? With the robe on? He'll be tripping and falling every few steps. You know what he had to do? Lift his robe up exposed his leg and run to his son. And all his servants are watching. That's what our father will do. He exposed himself for you and me. And he will do it again. He will do it again. And he will do it every day, every moment. I tell you, my friends, the day I realized that truth, I was set free. You know, I come to God's presence and say, Lord, you're an all-knowing, all-seeing God. Today, you know, I will tell you I love you. Tomorrow, I'll tell you, God, maybe I'm not really interested. But you're still loving me. And I tell Satan that, what's your problem? What's your problem? He knows I'm imperfect. He loves me. He doesn't have any problem with me. So what's your problem? So repentance change. Returning that comes from our mind, our conscious effort that often starts from the repentance of the heart. God sees the heart, my friends. See, the other thing is this. Be honest with God. I always tell God. Sometimes I say, God, I really have a problem forgiving this person. 
You know me, right? God, I'm not going to hide from you. Can any? See, I'm standing up on the stage here, right? Whatever anyone does at the back, I can see. <laughs> right? Then what more about God Almighty who is all-seeing, all-knowing? See, I've stopped trying to fool around with God. Yeah, because you try to figure, try to go beat around the bush. Ah, uh-uh, he's seeing over the bush already. Okay, PJ, don't even try. <laughs> so why? Come as you are. So let's move on. So what can we do? What can prevent us from repenting? First and foremost, unawareness, ignorance. Now we all were once unbelievers. The moment we came to the knowledge of the truth, we accepted it, right? By faith. Then there are those who are aware, the second point, but because of disobedience, choose not to repent. Yeah, you're looking at one year. <laughs> Many years, yeah. I, I always say, you know, growing up as a senior pastor's kid, two sons, wife, my mom prays. I used to drop them all in church and say, okay, three hours later, I'll come and pick you guys up. Bye. I don't want to do anything with God or church. Well, praise the Lord, wherever I ran, He was waiting for me. I think, okay, let's take this corner. Oh, you are there also. <laughs> so that's why I said, nah, no point fighting with this big man. You know, my wife prayed, my mom prayed, my father prayed. And praise the Lord, three hours later, the prodigal son comes back. And still a prodigal son. <laughs> Third point is important. Holy Spirit. We should allow the Spirit of the Lord that dwells in us to operate, to guide us, to lead us. See, doubts and lies from, the Satan, from Satan is something that we need to ignore. Something that we need to give him a hard time. And I'd really like to share this with you. The Lord told me, son, I've, you have shared this before, but can you just put it down in a slight form so that they can actually take a picture of it? I said, okay, Lord. So here you go. You can see it. Let's go on to the next slide, my dear brother. What happens when we re- repent? Repentance leads to forgiveness. And forgiveness leads to freedom in God. Forgiveness restores us with God and men. Very important here. Forgiveness, this is not the slide, but we'll come to the slide. Forgiveness restores us first with whom? With God and then your brother and sister that they have hurt. Whatever you do, you are not doing it against your brother and sister first. It's first with God. You know, the moment I came to realize, I said, oh my God. <clears throat> I'm in trouble. Yeah, whatever crafty thing or naughty thing I'm thinking up here, first, first and foremost, he already knows. Okay, PJ, I know what you're up to. (laughs) See, here we see in Exodus, Pharaoh tells Moses, I've sinned against your God and your people. Pharaoh. Pharaoh, who has all the other gods, have to say this. In this part, I'm going to say something. It's not, again, part of the message, but the Lord is saying, share with my people. I'm going to share with you. Go and look at Exodus. Every time Moses went to Pharaoh, and, you know, Moses is a stutterer, right? But I can't even do that, the stuttering here. And the stutterer is telling Moses uh, and telling Pharaoh this. <clears throat> and the Lord is, through Moses speaking, let my people go so that they can worship Just imagine you are in Pharaoh's presence and each time the Lord says the same thing. Let my people go so that they can worship me. He's a God that is seeking your and my communion with him. He could have said, let them go so I could give them the promised land so that they they can be my people. No, he says, so that they can worship me. Worship is precious to God. Satan gets angry when you and I stand there and say, Here I am, Lord. 
Here I am to worship you. He, Satan, the archangel, was an archangel of worship. He fell because of pride. And he hates it when you and I go and worship the Lord. Now let's go on to Joshua 7.20. Here we see another example of Achan who stole and hid things that he should not be taking. And he says, I've sinned against the Lord God of Israel. In Samuel, David, oh, we all know David, King David, says to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. You know, David, <clears throat> you know, when he said that is, he had slept with Bathsheba, actually he forcefully slept, him, slept with Bathsheba. You can even say it could be ten, tantamount to rape. Murdered the husband. Lied. Did everything wrong. The beautiful thing about David is every time he does something wrong, what does he do, my friends? Repent. Always repent, and God is forgiving. And see, and God sees the heart. It has to be genuine repent. And when I say that, my friends, <clears throat> if it is hard to be genuine, ask the Lord for help. He's not going to bash you. Eh, I'm seeing you're not genuine about it. Says, Lord, I'm having a hard time here. Help me. No? Get that understanding. There is no need to put up a front with God. Be genuine. Say, I'm really having a problem forgiving this guy. Help me here, Lord. And he will help you. I've experienced that many times. His grace comes upon. His, his mercy comes upon me. And then I see a change in heart. I, some of you may have heard it. You know, I hate drivers. I, I've been riding motorbike for seven, from the age of 17. So as a bikey, <clears throat> you're always looking out because win or lose, you lose. Right or wrong, right? <laughs> yeah, there's another bikey there. My brother there is in the jacket. So you're always looking out, you know. And when you have a driver that doesn't put signal and just cuts across, you know, your hands leave the handlebar <laughs> and it will go into the air. And the Lord says, forgive him. I said, Lord, that guy nearly killed me. You want me to forgive him? I'm having a hard time, Lord. And then the Lord tells me, <clears throat> Can you worship me? I say, Lord, no worries. I can always worship you. And the moment I go into worship mode with God, what happens? The Spirit of the Lord that dwells in me just flows out. God is so beautiful, planner. The next minute, then he will come around and says, now can you forgive him? I said, yeah, Lord, I can. What happened? I just let the Lord that resides in me take over the situation. So let that be a help to you as well. Let's move on. What happens when we repent? Let's continue. The Bible declares God will forgive all our sins. Why sometimes some people don't feel forgiven? Because fail to claim and receive our forgiveness. See, whenever we ask God for forgiveness, forgiveness is extended to us. We need to receive it. There is an offer and acceptance. God extends forgiveness, we receive it, and what do you say? If I give you something, what would you say? Thank you, Brother PJ. Or when you give me something, I'll say thank you. Sis, thank you. Sometimes we forget to close it. So the Lord taught, taught me something. The Lord says, son, whenever you come to my presence and you ask me for forgiveness, conclude that transaction. It's a legal transaction. Offer an acceptance by saying, thank you, Lord, I receive it. Because sometimes I ask, Lord, forgive me, and then I walk away and Am I forgiven? Satan will come, hey, are you forgiven? But the moment I learn that from the Lord, I say yes. In the spiritual realm, it's a done deal. I asked, he extended, I said thank you. Sealed, offer and acceptance. So let that be an encouragement to you. Close it. Close it by saying, Lord, I receive it. Thank you. The other thing, is tell Satan, the deceiver, the liar, it's a done deal, God has forgiven. What's your problem? That's, that's, I've put there exactly how I talk to Satan. It's a done deal, God has forgiven, forgiven me and is unconditional. What's your problem? And I say, Satan, get thee behind me. Give him the boot. Give him the boot. Get thee behind me. What's your issue here? So we need to understand that. We need to claim and live with that forgiveness. The other thing is this. You see, this is the important part. This is the slide that I was talking about, turning the table on Satan. 
This is the other thing that he taught me, which the Lord says, share with my people, make sure they, they, catch, it, they catch it. When Satan brings up any of my sins, the Lord had taught me to do this. First, two kinds. If it's, if it's an unconfessed sin, and I have not repented, for the first time, Satan is bringing it to my attention, but most of the time, it is God that brings it to my attention first. Before even I commit, the Lord says, son, don't do it. And sometimes, I probably forget the word sometimes, my wife will know, most of the time, this stubborn mule will still do it. Then Satan will come and say, aha, PJ, you did it, right? And that's where the Lord has taught me, I should immediately repent and with a thankful heart receive God's forgiveness. You know, then what I tell Satan, thank you, you just reminded me that I really need to repent about this. Thank you. Or, if it's a past sin, something that I did some time ago, he brings to my memory, what do I do? I said, yes, Satan. God loves me. God has already forgiven me. Thank you for reminding me of God's love and His grace. So on both situations, I don't let him bash me, Satan. I turn it into praise. I turn it into praise. You know, sometimes, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go there and use one of y'all as an example. It's like Satan taking my hands and then getting me to hit my own head. After some time, he let go of me and I'm still carrying on hitting my own head. Stupid, right? It's quite ridiculous, right? We do that at times. We bash ourselves. He initiates it and then Satan is standing there and watching. Oh, good job. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. We should stop and say, no, God has forgiven me and God will forgive me as well. Once we have that shift, we give him a hard time. I can honestly share this with you. In, in fact, while the Lord told me, put this on slide so my people can see what I've taught you. The Lord asked me, when was the last time Satan came up, came, came up to you with your sin? I said, Lord, it's a hard time. I can't even remember now. Because he has stopped coming. He says, why do I go after PJ here? He will turn every attempt to attack him into worship. Right? So that's another knowledge from the Lord. So we must always turn the table on Satan. Always repent and turn to God. Because God is always waiting for us. In God, we have the victory. In God, we have the praise and worship. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Sometimes, you and I will ask ourselves, how come Satan is not moving? How come Satan is not living? Because we have failed to resist him. Put up the fight. Put up the fight. You know, and sometimes I go to the extreme of even telling Satan, hey, Loser, what are you doing here? That's how I talk to him. Sometimes, okay, I've got to be very careful here. For me, I listen to the Lord. What I tell him is what I get the impression from the Lord to say and I'll say. We must be also careful what fights to take, what fights not to take. It has to be spirit-led as well. But in general, this is what, you see, this is the authority God has given us. And I also tell him, the Lord tells me, son, remind him he hit, was crushed at Calvary. So when the Lord tells me that, I said, Satan, I smell something that's <clears throat> wounded and injured. Is that you? See, and he gets really angry with that. But it is only when the Lord initiates that I initiate the conflict. And there, once the Lord told me, you know why, son, demons or Satan like to show the skull? Because his skull was smashed. They have no eyes, they have no ears, they have no brains. It's a good point, God. <laughs> so now every time I see a skull, I say, Satan, <clears throat> really nothing in there. <laughs> see, God, as much as a serious God, he loves talking. And he loves having fun with you and me. Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by might or power, but by my spirit. Friends, <clears throat> you can ask my wife, every time we go and pray for someone who is especially demonic, oppressed, 
we come with the authority of God. I can tell you this, my friends. Sometimes when I go to pray for someone, Satan comes up to me and says, Hey, PJ, I know what you just did a, a, a day ago. You are not righteous. So how can you come after me? I say, Satan, you're absolutely right. I am not righteous. I'm not coming with my righteousness. I'm coming with his righteousness. Get lost. It is simple, my friends. It is simple. Every time we come with our, what does the Bible say? Our righteousness is like filthy rags. It is like filthy rags. So I hear, I say, I say, God, you know what I've done. Satan knows what I've done. You ask me to pray for this person, here I am. You know, the love of God, once I was praying for someone, someone I prayed for this person already, and this person was still <clears throat> had the spirit of darkness operating in this, in this lady. And I was asked to pray for that person. After all these people have prayed, so I walked up to that lady and she was lying on the floor and I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? The Lord says, do you love this lady? I said, yes, yeah, she's my sister in Christ. I've never ever met her before. But she's my sister in Christ. She's in church. And I feel so sad to see her suffering under the power of darkness. So the Lord asked me this. So you love her, right? I said, yes, she's my sister in Christ. The next question from the Lord is this. If you love her, what is my love for her? I just kept quiet. If this filthy rag loves that dear sister of, as a sister in Christ, how much God Almighty? Nothing, Lord. My love in comparison to your love, nothing at all. I said, what do you want me to do? You know what he told me? Release my love into her right now. I just knelt down, put my hands over her head and said, Father, I release your love into my dear sister's life. And you know what happened? Her eyes that was closed and her mouth was gibberishing away. Eyes open, mouth stops. And you can see through an eyes whether someone is possessed or someone has been set free. And I said, Lord, give me a proof that she is set free. And then she utters, Jesus, I love you. Amen. Can a demonic spirit say, Jesus, I love you? What did the Lord just taught me before? My love is greater than your love. And she says, Jesus, I love you. See, friends, all I'm asking of you is this. More of this, slightly less of this. This is important. Knowledge of God, reading the Word is important. But we need the Spirit of the Lord to operate in us. We need the love of God to operate in us. Like someone was asking me, the last Saturday you prayed for the last person until 10.30. I did say the prayer team will be here. <laughs> but it was a one-man prayer team. It was only me. <laughs> Every time I open the eyes, someone else is standing there. He says, for hours you, you kept praying for people. What kept you going? I said, the love of God. He has done so much for this sinner. Why can't I reach out? And that person is standing there. They are waiting to be touched by God. So it's only the love of God that gives us all hope. And friends, you have heard testimonies where the Lord has asked me to share how far God goes to pursue a soul. So you and I can say it is well with our soul. We need to ask God and receive forgiveness. John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So we need to initiate. We need to confess. The Spirit of the Lord will come. We need to confess and God is more than glad. More than glad. The other aspect that the Lord has taught me is this. We need to ask God for help. When we see Matthew 6, 9, 13, all of you all will be familiar. That's the Lord's prayer. See here, the disciples ask the Lord, Lord, how should we pray? You know, when I first read this, or when the Lord brought my attention to it, the Lord brought me back to my classroom where my science teacher had just told the class, 
for tomorrow's science exam, I have set the exam paper, and these are the topics I'm going to test you on, and there will be a question on this. Straight away, I put my hands up. I said, teacher, how do we answer that question? Knowing that, given her nice heart, she will then go on to say, you've got to have five key points. These are the five key points. And I know how to get perfect score from that question because I just draw it out from my teacher. So the Lord says, same here. When my disciples asked me how should we pray, I gave them the answer. Go and study, my son. So then I started to study. How do we say? Pray in this way. Our Father who is heaven, hallowed be thy name or your name. I said, Lord, then I've got to change my prayer. My first is, Father, this is my prayer list. <laughs> Please answer. <laughs> but you are saying, give glory to God first. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Oops, I've got to roll up this prayer request, all this, and keep it. Because what? Not my will, your will be done. It brings about a change in us. See, sometimes we say, how come prayer is not answered? Alignment. If you pray in accordance with His will for you, or oh, my family, my sons, have, you know you have been posted. I've been in the forces for 30 years, posted all over the place, seen all, all of the stuff. You know, the other day I was just, when you know you had the Lebanon explosion? My family and I have seen three explosions. Not have seen. From 100 meters to 300 meters, that's where we were as a family to all three explosions, terrorist bombing. But even though I shall walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. My boss has called me. He says, mate, you all right? You save your family, save your children safe? I say, yes, sir. Because I know the prophecies and the words that he has declared over my life has to be fulfilled. You see, God watches over us. Verse 11 says, give us this day our daily bread. It says once a month bread. No, daily bread. You and I, how many of us like fresh baked bread? You all right? He says, I'll give you daily fresh baked bread. Don't be happy with one week old bread. Come to me, I'll give you daily. And you see, let us not be like the Israelites. They had manna. Every day. Was that a miracle, my friends? Yes. Every day you see miracle. Yet, let us not grumble against God. You know, when I see and I read all of this, I don't judge. I straight away say, Lord, let me check within myself. Am I like that? Is my behavior like that? Am I grumbling? Am I forgetting your daily grace and your mercies? You know, every breath that I take, I thank the Lord. The other day, that God, God was speaking to me and he was saying, son, you know, these people in science, they need everything explained. If they don't, if they don't understand it, they don't believe it. It's not true. Then you tell them, hold their breath until they understand all about science of breathing and the air. I said, Lord, they will turn blue. Yeah, let them turn blue. Right. Because the scripture says God breath, breathed into man. So we, we are breathing His breath. Whether you realize it or not, whether the scientists approve of it or not, it is there. So technology today can make us understand so many things. But maybe a thousand years ago, no, they couldn't understand. Did they stop breathing? No, they kept breathing. Whether it was oxygen or nitrogen. Same thing like phone. I told the Lord, Lord, how do I explain to people? When people ask me, PJ, how do you hear God? How do you talk to God? I said. I asked the Lord this. How do I explain to people? He said, the Lord says, take your phone out and tell them. See, a thousand years ago, you tell someone there's going to be this device where you talk, someone else is going to hear, they're going to see pictures, you Google, they're going to get all the information and say, you're crazy. They probably take that and knock your head. But today, you and I, we all use the phone. Just because we don't understand God is beyond all of this, we cannot confine God. Same like the Lord told me, tell us, ask some of these people. I have some atheist friend who doesn't believe in God. So I said, Lord, how do I tell them? It's a step of faith. 
The Lord says, go and ask them, do they fly? Do they take aeroplane? I say, yes. Okay, I ask them, do you fly? They say, yes. The next question to them, do you know how an aeroplane flies? The principles of physics, the principles of flight. They will look at me, what are you talking about? So you don't know all these things, and yet you take a flight. So the Christian walk is like that, step of faith. We take the step of faith and we'll see. The point that I would like to bring you to is verse 13. What does verse 13 say here? Can we read it together? And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Friends, the moment I saw that, it made a big difference for me. I went up to the Lord. I said, Lord, there is an opportunity I've seen right in front of me. I'm, go- I'm tempted. And I remember the Lord's prayer. I'm going to say it to you, Lord. I'm going to say it to you. And friends, all the time, the Spirit of the Lord that's in me arises and gives me the strength to walk away. Then I realized because I failed to ask God for help. So let's be encouraged. Always turn to God, ask for God's help. In conclusion, I have put up five, I call this five fingers checklist because you require to use your hands. If you could join me here with your hands, right or left hands. First, the thumb. Acknowledge my or the sin. So, is that thumbs up? It is, right? That's the first stage. <laughs> you know, when, this is funny. When the Lord told me, this, uh, hey, list down what are the five things you would do. I list down the five things. Then the Lord says, five, right? You count. How many is there? I say, one, two, three, four, five. He says, so it's one hand, right? I say, yeah. He says, so it's your five-finger checklist. And this, I was telling Brother Aiden, I had, we live at Sterling, we had a power outage from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. And I was supposed to prepare all of this. I said, Lord, the enemy is really doing everything. You know, so I, I googled on my phone, when is the power outage? They say 3 o'clock, it will end. And this, 2 o'clock, the power comes on, and I quickly started. I said, Lord, you've got to put all these things together. This is the last slide he told me. Five fingers. Acknowledge my sin. Second, confess. I said, Lord, here it is. I have sinned against you. What is the third point? Ask and receive forgiveness. Fourth, turn away from sin. Wave to sin. Bye. Five, restore the wrong. Put my hands out if I've hurt my brother or my sister and say I've sinned against God and you. So let that be a guide for each one of us as we journey. You know, whatever happens, Lord, lead us, God, guide us. And you will see here, for the first point, It says, acknowledge my sin. That's what I actually typed. Then the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, Son, I want you to do something else. I want you to remind my people something else. I said, what is it? It is not only your sin, the sin. I said, what do you mean, the sin? He says, tell my people, they can stand in the gap for the sins of the nation and the sins of their family and the sins of their loved one. Don't let anyone or you, you're talking to me, rob them of that authority. He said, well done, sir. I will do it. My slash the sin. So remember, you can ask for forgiveness for your own sin and stand in the gap for the nation. Stand in the gap for your loved ones. Isn't that powerful? Because God has given you and me the authority. The scripture says, believe in the Lord, you and the household will be saved. You ask my wife, when I first married her, she and her sister were the only Christians in a Hindu family. 20 years later, every single one, including her grandfather at the age of 80 odd, accepted the Lord. Why? Every day we said, Lord, it's your promise. Believe in the Lord. You and your household will be saved. Your promise, done deal. I'm going to say, praise the Lord. You know, we have no time to share how her grandfather, the last Hindu man, the head of the household, everyone was afraid to share to him. But the Lord told me one day, go, sit beside the man. And he was telling me, I'm ready to accept your Lord. What took you all so long? 
Every day, y'all are... Every month, we used to pray in her uncle's home for his salvation. See, that's the Lord you and I serve. If I can care for someone, how much more about him? Right? So, let that be an encouragement, my friends. Thank you for listening. And if I could invite you to stand on your feet as we conclude. Remember the love of God. Remember the grace of God. Remember the mercy of God. And the thing he's asking me to just leave with each and every one of you is this. Okay, don't be surprised what he's going to say. I'm laughing already at what he's going to say. And this is what he's saying. Children, I am madly in love with you. Nothing you can do will cause me to reject you. Please do not reject me. So even as you hear that from Lord God Almighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, I ask each and every one of you with, be it your open hand, but most importantly, with your open heart, say, Lord, here I am. I'm coming to you not because I have a laundry list, a prayer list, but I'm coming to you for who you are. Just as you are coming just for me. See, when the Lord seeks you and me, He's just looking for you and me. So you and I should come to Him just like what Mary did. Sit at His feet, look at His eyes, gaze into His love. Let us not be Martha busy with so many other things. The other thing the Lord is asking me to share and remind most of us is this. You know, everyone wants an experience with God. Everybody wants revival. The Lord is saying, ah, you want to hear the good news? The good news is I am waiting to pour that on you. Don't look your, to your left or to your right. Don't look at your brother to be revived, your sister to be revived, your church to be revived. Seek to experience revival yourself, my children. Because revival is a personal experience. I'm a personal God. Look at your fingers, my children. Look at your iris, my children. There is no replicate. You are unique. If I created you unique, you are unique indeed. And you ask of my presence. I ask of your presence, my children. I turn up always 100% for my people. Can you please turn up 100% for me? And let's have a communion of worship. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your words. Thank you for your wisdom. And above all, thank you for your love and sacrifice for us. And even as we meditate on all the things that you have revealed to us, we know your words will fall on good grounds because this is all good grounds. This is all hearts hungry for you. This is hearts that is exposed and say, Lord, you see everything, you know everything. And here we are. So Father, in obedience, I release your blessing. I release each and every promise that you have established in this word upon each and every soul that is listening to this word. The Lord says, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, my children. Father, even as we continue in your presence. Your presence will never leave us. So never let us leave your presence. Watch over my brothers and my sisters. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. And let all of your heavenly purpose be fulfilled in each and every one of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. Anyone needs prayer? Please come forward. Thank you. God bless you.